Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and this week uh, I wanted to share with you a quick overview of my experience of Sam Mustafa's Nimitz. Um, I showed you on a video a few months ago, receipt of the game. Uh, we actually got our first game last night. Uh, we played the basic game and the intro scenario Freya uh, provided with the game. You can download that from Sam's website at honor um had an absolute blast with it it was really good fun um so i just wanted to talk through chat through the game um our experience uh whether we're going to play it again and some of the pros and cons um i suppose the first thing i'd like to just say is that nimitz is definitely not for the naval purist um if you are a heavily committed naval wargamer this probably isn't the game for you um, if you're someone who likes an occasional naval battle uh, or has never played naval battles before or if you're someone who just wants a game for a few hours a bit of fun this is the perfect game for you um, anything that comes out of Sam's stable uh, from my own experience is fantastic I love all his rules I've got a lot of his games uh, Longstreet, Blucher, Lasalle, uh, to name a few, Rommel, another one, uh, which we've played many times. All great games, um, can't fault them. So I'm not a naval wargamer, I'll admit that. I have got ships that I've accumulated over many years and we've dabbled. Uh, we used to play a bit of General Quarters many years ago, uh, but it wasn't something that we would play on a regular basis. Um, so the game itself um, is, is very straightforward. It's broken down into the basic rules or the housey campaign game. And then you've got some advanced rules that you can add into the game if you want to as well. The basic game is just that. It allows you to chuck down a cloth, a sea cloth. Um, it's non-gridded and pick some ships, move around, have an engagement and pack it away and you can play a game in as little as half an hour up to a couple of hours. Uh, Operation Freya um, is a good scenario because you've got quite a few ships, you're learning the game, you're learning the rules. Um, so the Germans have got the Neishal, Scharnhorst and uh, a light cruiser and the British have got Repulse and Hood and four, uh, three destroyers. Um, so you've got a, a decent number of ships. Uh, we play with three players, so one German player, two Royal Naval players. Uh, I had Hood and Repulse. Uh, the other player had the Destroyers. Um, and we had a really good game. I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience in the game itself. Um, just to sort of give you the flip to that housey, which we haven't played yet, the campaign version uses a gridded uh, mat a bit like uh, Rommel um, and you start to bring in things like dogfights, um, aircraft carriers etc etc it starts to get much more involved and there's very much perhaps more geared towards the Pacific kind of theatre um, than it would be maybe the Mediterranean although that's very easily adaptable the advanced rules bring in things like auxiliaries, um, they bring in kamikazes, all sorts of extra things there as well. So you can you can bulk the game up depending on what level you want to play. Um, the base game doesn't have any of that. Um, so you've basically got torpedoes, secondary and main armaments, simple as that. So um, once you've decided on forces, whatever game you're doing, whether you're doing your own points driven scenario, etc. Um, the sequence of play is simple, very simply broken down. Uh, you've got a few sort of things like victory point uh, conditions, markers. Then you have initiative or advantage as it's called, which is a straight roll off. Advantage allows you to decide whether your forces are going to operate first or second in the phase and once that's been decided then we get into movement so uh, ships move at slow average or fast speeds uh, destroyers are 
basically uh, two speeds. All other ships have three speeds. Um, if you have advantage, you would move first. Um, so you can decide to have a force, which is kind of together. Um, and there's some rules around that. But you can, again, as long as you agree between you what those distances are, that's fine. Um, there's a little bit of common sense there, which I like. Um, or you can separate your ships up into separate squadrons or units or individually if you want to. So as the advantage player, you would move a slow ship or a group of slow ships first, then the opponent and so forth until you've done all your slow movements. Then you go through normal, then you go through fast. Um, that's quite interesting because as the non-advantaged player, you can decide quite sort of late on when you want to move your troops, uh, move your ships uh, from that point of view. So that adds a little bit of interest into the movement element of the game. That's quite clever. And the same thing applies with the shooting. Um, it's called artillery um, and gun. Each gun is called a tube, but, you know, it's just an interpretation rather than anything else. Uh, for me, they're your gun, secondary guns or main guns, um, but that's fine. So secondaries will fire first. Uh, they have shorter ranges, um, harder to obviously hit and penetrate with uh, on the bigger capital ships, but they're very effective all the same, as we found out in our game. Um, and again, it, you alternate between uh, ship groups or ship individuals um, until every side has played all their secondary armament firing. And then you do the same with primaries. And then finally in the turn, um, it's torpedoes. So it, torpedoes, again, have been very simplified in the game. Um, and what I liked about them was that they weren't a game changer. They were um, something that added another element to the game. Um, they could be massively effective or massively ineffective. Um, and there was a bit of a random luck element in there as well, but I was fine with that. So uh, firing the firing mechanisms I thought very, very clever. So you're, you're basically establishing the difficulty of the shot, uh, which will be based on a number of factors, but it could be how good your director system is on the ship, um, the target speed, your speed, the... Um, silhouette of the target is it sort of straight on or broadside on um, and, and some other factors in there once you've established that you will cross reference that with the number of tubes or guns that are firing from the turrets um, and that will give you a number you need to roll or over on a d6 very simple and then each ship on on its um, ship chart will have the penetration tables it tells you Depending on what you roll then on a D6 will determine the pen number. And if that exceeds the armour of the ship you're firing at, you will do that amount of um, hull damage, if that's the right word, uh, or damage points to the ship um, at that point. Um, every hit, uh, penetration or not, will result in a critical roll. Um, yes, it's called a critical roll, but critical damage it does not always do and in most cases it doesn't it's more a, a mechanism for allowing attrition to occur um, and we noticed that particularly as the Royal Navy firing at the German capital ships that they could soak up a lot of attritional damage um, but the attrition all the same was very effective over a period of time and it also allowed secondary armaments to shoot at main ships, not necessarily being able to penetrate the armour, but to inflict some subsidial uh, damage around the ship, whether that be a, a gun knocked out, uh, whether it be the director hit, the flak capabilities, etc, etc. So a really nice, um, simple, simplified mechanism. As I say, um, some may find that too simplified for us, it played really quickly and offered a, for me, quite a realistic outcome a lot of the time. Um, so our game, how did we find it? Um, let's say we played Op, Op Freya. Uh, we set up as per the book. Um, interestingly, first turn, 
the uh, destroyer squadron decided to sort of charge straight on towards the German capital ships. Uh, the Scharnhorst opened fire straight away on Paladin, one of the Royal Navy destroyers, and pretty much blew it out of the water in the first turn. Uh, it was critically damaged and wasn't really very effective thereafter. Um, so as the Royal Navy players were already thinking, wow, you know, we've got to be very careful here. Um, and as a result of that, the destroyers kind of backed off and circled, uh, waiting for Repulse and Hood to close the range to get into effective shooting distances, uh, which eventually they did. And Hood and, and Nisehal then sort of traded blows, um, both consistently rubbish uh, in their shooting. Um, I needed three plus on the dice most of the time and as typically rolled ones and twos. Uh, I think I missed with seven main armament shots um, in, in a row. So that tells you how good my dice rolls were. Um, but meanwhile, um, other subsidiary damage was being done from the secondaries on the destroyers, the secondary on some of the ships and attritional things were starting to build up like the director had been hit on one of the German ships. Quite a few secondaries had been knocked out. Um, Hood had lost a turret, etc, uh, etc. Et so it was quite interesting. There was things happening. Um, Repulse and... Um, Shanghai certainly were the ones that did the most damage on, on ships overall. Um, the German cruiser was battered to the point it had no fire capability at all, and in, but it managed to extract itself and escape uh, without finally being sunk. It was really probably one shot away from, from being sunk in all reality. Um, so the game ended really with Hood getting sunk. Um, by Sean Horst because Hood just couldn't hit anything. Sean Horst kept peppering it and eventually the damage told. Um, and then Repulse was kind of circled by the two German capital ships. And although it was able to inflict some damage, um, we'd already kind of agreed the last turn of the game. And typically the last shot of the game from Sean Horst on the critical hit after doing a penetration rolled a double six magazine hit ship explodes sunk um which was kind of a nice ending to the game really because it gave closure to the game the destroyers were still about they would still um a real nuisance factor to the german ships were very effective um uh, torpedoes were fired by both sides fairly ineffectually they did a little bit of, again of subsidiary damage but nothing major i don't think i'd be as concerned with torpedoes going forward as maybe we all felt um initially but again they're, they're a valuable asset to have in your armory um but overall all three of us said we had a great game it was good fun it was quick easy setup we we're set up within two minutes playing the game um probably took us about an hour and a half hour and three quarters uh be much quicker now we know the rules and we're looking forward to having another game next week. We're going to do River Plate. Um, so the German battle, pocket battleships, Graf Spey uh, versus the British squadron, including the Exeter, Ajax, Achilles, etc. Um, I'm going to see how that plays out. Uh, maybe plans to give the Denmark straight action a go as well. Um, and of course, start to add in in due course, maybe some of the advanced rules bringing into play uh, aircraft carriers and aircraft. Um, I think we all would like to have a go with a few swordfish against uh, some battleships. So it uh, could be good fun. But I hope that's given you a bit of a flavor of Nimitz. Um, we're, we're, we're really enjoying it. It's fun, uh, but it has got some good historical flavor, some good friction built into the system. It plays really smoothly. Um, as I say, it's not for the naval purist, uh, but if you want a fun game that you can set up quickly, uh, you don't even need models to play it. We played with uh, ship counters last night, perfectly feasible. A blue cloth, no scenery required, very simple. 
Um, so that's Nimitz, Sam Mustafa. Uh, give it a look. It's a great game. Good to see you all. See you all again soon.